welcome to my Big Finish collection of February 2019. Uh, it's grown a lot since, um, since the last ones. In this one, I'm only going to be covering what I have on CD, so, yeah, let's just get into it. Right, we're starting off with the monthly range, and first we have the Sirens of Time. Yeah, I decided, you know what, I might as well get the first one in the entire two of the monthly range. Then we have a bit of an oddity. Uh, let's see if I can actually get it out. Whispers of Terror, just the leaflet and the actual discs inside. Um, I accidentally bought that. I, I thought I was getting the whole package, but no. Land of the Dead. Um, people say the story is terrible, and I think it's alright. Not the greatest thing ever, but gets too much hate in my opinion. But to be honest, it's not one of the greats, so fair enough. The Genocide Machine, Big Finish's first Dalek story, and it's pretty decent. It's not the best Dalek story ever, but it's, you know. Winterfleet Adept, people slate this one, and I don't really understand it. Uh, it's certainly a weak one from Andrew Cartmel, but, you know. Then we have Sword of Orion. It's, an, it's Big Finish's first Cyberman story, and it's with the Eighth Doctor, and it's alright. Thing is, with the Eighth Doctor, they. The releases got worse and worse until we got to Chimes of Midnight, so... There we go. Um, Minuet and Hell. This one's missing, like, one of its discs, so I might just replace that at some point. Lugaroo. To be honest, I tried listening to this one, and it was just like... Uh, it's just part, part one didn't interest me enough. But it's got a good setting. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, so... There we go. Dust breeding. I don't get why people hate the second half of this. First half's great. Second half is not as good, but like Jeffrey Bezos' master, he he sells it. Also, spoiler alert: his master's in it, but I'm pretty sure most people know that anyway. Blood Tide. Um, one of the few big finish Silurian stories, and it's actually really good. I highly recommend it, although it is controversial for one main reason. You'll know what reason it is once you listen to it, but I would say it didn't really bother me, but I can see why people are annoyed. Eye of the Scorpion, the very first error mem audio, I think, ooh, I, yeah, I do think the case is a bit broken for this one, but it's fine. Uh, it's, it's a decent story, so there we go. Primeval. This is in really good condition, it was practically new even though it technically wasn't, but it was in really good condition when I bought it, and it's the keeper of chalk and done right in all honesty. Then we've got The Chums of Midnight, it's a really good story, probably my favourite Big Finish audio. Seasons of Fear, highly underrated, um, uh, because it's right next to Chimes, but it's still a really good story with a really interesting villain. And also a villain from the classic series makes a comeback, and it's oh boy, it's it's a good one. I when I first listened to it, I might as well just keep it out. When I first listened to it, it was like a complete shock, and I was like, oh my god, this is actually really amazing. Time of the Daleks, probably my least favorite big finished Dalek story. It's all right, but it's, it's a bit underwhelming. Neverland. It is really good. Probably the best Gallifrey adventure um, from Doctor Who in general. Then we have the Maltese Penguin. I put it in the monthlies because it's like release 33 and a half. So yeah, it's an alright story. Probably the most access accessible Big Finish release because it's so nice and friendly. Church in the Crown. Very good pure historical. Um, Perry's actually... Uh, mistaken for Queen Anne. Uh, they're both played by Nicola Bryant, but Nicola Bryant uses her English accent um, to play Queen Anne, so that's pretty interesting. Jubilee, my favourite Dalek story on Big Finish. It's it's just really good. There's another Dalek story on Big Finish that I find also amazing, but we'll get to that later. Flip Flop, interesting story. Can be um, both discs can be played in either order, and it still makes sense. I do recommend it. Zagreus. I recommend this only if you've like listened to like all the 8th Doctor stuff thus far. So there we go. Now time for the 51 to 100s. I've nearly finished 51 to 100s. 
Um, I've only got like six left to go, although one of them's out of print, so uh, you you can probably guess like which ones uh, I don't have if, just by cross-referencing the ones I do have. So first up, we have the Wormery, a uh, pretty interesting story with the Sixth Doctor and Iris Wildtime. Um, Shirt though, the first 51 to 100 to go out of print. It's amazing. Honestly, one of the best big finishes out there. And then we've got Creed of the Crommon. Again, I don't get the hate for this, but it's easily the worst Divergent Universe story. Introduces Kariz, though, so... Um, the Natural History of Fear. A, one, a brilliant big finish audio that... It's a bit of a mind fudge, so there we go. Twilight Kingdom. Nah, it's... Nah. An Axis of Insanity, an insane story! <laughs> um, but yeah, it's actually really good, I do recommend it. Arrangements for War, basically Big Finish does Romeo and Juliet. The Harvest uh, introduces Hex, um, it's, it's an interesting story, it's not... The second half I think is better than the first, both, so... Roof of the World. I recently listened to this, and it's 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 certainly something. It's written by the guy who wrote like Lost in the Dark Dimension. It's I mm, yeah I I do recommend it, although it is really weird, especially the first half. Although the ending is a bit rushed, and it was brilliantly paced until the final episode. Medicinal purposes. I want to like this, but it's written poorly. Uh, all, all the performances are great. It's it's about Burke and Hare, but like the doctors like congratulating Burke and Hare for their things which contributed to science. And, and we've got Faith Stealer, really good. Um, about a bunch of religions existing in harmony, the one tries to convert everyone else. It's pretty good. Uh, the last, really depressing story, but it's just really well written. Kerdroya, probably, other than Scherzo, it might be my favourite Divergent Universe story, simply it's it's just so creative, and there's three Eighth Doctors, and that's actually really cool. The Next Life, uh, it's the final Divergent Universe story, and it, it's alright. Then we've got the Juggernauts, a really good Sixth Doctor, uh, Mel and Dalek story. Dream Time, possibly the worst Seventh Doctor story I've listened to thus far. Catch 1782, pretty interesting uh, time travel, timey wimey type story with Mel. Unregenerate, underwhelming. I'll, I'll have to say it did. Eh. I've not listened to this one, but the Council of Nicaea. Terra Firma, Doctor's back in our universe, and of course he's breathed by the Daleks. Thicker than water. Okay, so basically, the story sort of explains how Evelyn left the TARDIS, but it's like. It's a sequel to Arrangements for War. Um, but Evelyn's left the TARDIS, but she's with the, the guy that she fell in love with in Arrangements for War, and Mel's traveling with the Doctor, and they're both visiting Evelyn now, so there we go. This is a bad angle for me, but like, oh, my arms hurt. Uh, Live 34, a really good, uh, it's interesting because it's like Doctor Who as a radio broadcast, so that's pretty interesting. Scarity Cat, it's, mm, yeah, I don't think it deserves the, all the hate it gets, but I can see why it does, if you know what I mean. Okay. Singularity, um, it's an interesting story set in Russia, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, it's not the greatest thing ever. It's a shame, I really want to listen to like, Fifth Doctor and Turlo stories, because I like the Turlo, but the thing is, the stories with them aren't exactly the best. Other Lives, uh, really good pure historical. Um, Eighth Doctor's confused for uh, someone's husband. Charlie has to pose as Madame de Roche, and uh, Carriz is, yeah, he's, in a freak show. On to the second row now. Peer pressure. It's um
I've just realised the pun in the title. Yeah, peer pressure is alright. It's uh, it's not the best written. It's like I don't know. I I I'm scared about this Evelyn trilogy because it's just like it's it's not been too well written so far. Um, when I listen to Assassin in the Limelight, which I don't have currently, but I will get at some point. I'm I'm scared because like it might not be written well because this is written by the same guy. Yeah, Robert Ross. It's written by the same guy as Medicinal Purposes, so yeah, this isn't that great. Speed, but something that is that great, Night Thoughts. Possibly one of the best Big Finish stories ever made. Honestly, it's out of print, but if you can get this on CD, it is worth its price in gold. So, <laughs> I actually get it. Uh, it's, it's worth its weight in gold, in all honesty. I should probably review it one day, actually. Um, for Hooniversals. Then we've got Time Works, an interesting story by Steve Lyons. Um, basically, he's, uh, like, these clockwork men, like, change the flow of time, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it just explores timey wimey elements, and it's, it's, it's just good. Um, I've not listened to The Kingmaker yet. Uh, I'm trying to go through all of Fifth Doctor, Perry and RMM stories before this, until I start listening to this, then I'll start listening to the rest of the um, 51 to 100. So basically I've not really listened to any of the rest of Monthly Range until I actually say that I have, you know, unless I say it otherwise, I, you know. So the settling, it looks interesting, Hex holding the sword. Um, Something inside. I'm surprised this went out of print before Time Works, because apparently Time Works is better. Something inside apparently was. Well, I I don't know. I I get the feeling this is going to be good, but not as good as Time Works. Um. The Nowhere Place. Yeah, this is a bit of a bland cover. I prefer the other cover art, but you know what? It's fine. Red. I can't wait to get to this. I think I'll watch Paradise Towers first, because this is apparently Paradise Towers, but good and dark and stuff. So, yeah. The Reaping. First story of 80s Cybermen, but it doesn't actually have David Banks and what's-his-face, that voice, Mark Mark Hardy. So, so, yeah. And then we've got the third one in Cybermen trilogy, The Gathering. Um... The guy being converted into Cyberman looks like Joseph Lidster, but, you know. Uh, Memory Lane. I, I do love this cover art. I think this cover art is, like, the most striking cover art. Like, the, like when I was thinking of 51 to 100, other than Shirt So, I would say this is the most iconic cover art, because this is, like, the one I remember most from, like, years ago. And, like, when I was first getting into Big Finish, I'm like, eventually I'll get that, so... And I have it now, so that's good. No Man's Land. Um, I think it's set in... It's probably set in World War One. 1917, so... Uh, yeah, that looks like it's set in World War One. Year of the Pig. Um, I want to listen to this soon, because it's the Year of the Pig this year. Um, like, in Chinese New Year, so yeah. Now, Circular Time, this one really intrigues me. It sounds really good, so, yeah. Like, Big Finish's first audio anthology. Then we get into the Nicholas Briggs era. Renaissance of the Daleks. Apparently this one's terrible, and it says based on from a story uh, by Christopher H. with me, but they changed the plot a lot, so he's like, I don't want to be credited for this. Valhalla. Um, it's got Michelle Gomez in it. Frozen Time, it's got, um, What's Her Face, that was in The Living Daylight, in it, Miriam, well, Miriam Dabo, but I'm saying What's Her Face because I can't remember the character's name, um, I should because The Living Daylight is one of my favourite Bond films, so yeah. Son of the Dragon, it looks like it has a Dracula in it. 100. Yeah, this, this story, I've listened to this one, listened to this audio anthology and it's just, it's weird. 
like, I don't know what to make of it, but, like, it's worth getting for the Robert Sherman story alone. Absolution is Carissa's final story. The Mind's Eye, I got this in the recent sale along with The Bride of Peladon. Uh, so, yeah. It's got that guy from, um, Torchwood Countryside in it, so, yeah. The Girl Who Never Was, um... Charlie's last story before she travels with the sick doctor. Bride of Peladon, RMM's last story. They just get rid of companions willy nilly. Like, soon they would get rid of Evelyn. So, yeah. The Condemned, uh, sick doctor and Charlie's first adventure together. And a big jump, uh, a thousand tiny wings. Uh, I got this in, like, the seventh doctor sale, like, ages ago, as in, like, 2017, when it was the 30th anniversary. I made a Hooniversals video of all my pickups from that, like, sale, but mm, it, it got deleted, so. Survival of the Fittest, uh, it's got a bonus story in it called Klein Story, it's like the first part of this release, so yeah. The Architects of History, the final story in the Klein Trilogy. Um, the Klein Trilogy I do recommend. Uh, I feel like you would you will have to have listened to Colditz first, which I do recommend. Colditz is a good story. I th I thought there was something off with it, but you know. Uh, and now is the time where um, the reversible covers come in. So we've got the Doomsday Quatrain. I got this for Christmas from one of my friends. Um, it's I'm not gonna listen to this until I've got like the entire like arc or not the entire arc, but uh, I'm, I'm going to listen to the monthly range all in order. So yeah, it'll be a while until I get to this one. The Silver Turk, um, I got, I remember I got this in like an 8th Doctor sale, where I got all the Mary Shelley stories, and you got, um, Mary's story from the Company of Friends in there for free. Um, but like, it's, you can't get Mary's story on its own anymore, I don't think, so. There we go. Uh, I do recommend it. I do want to pick up the Company of Friends at some point, so. Yeah. Also, The Silver Turk is possibly one of the best Cybermen stories. That's by Mark Platt, the writer of Spare Parts, so that's good. The Witch from the Well. Uh, also a really good story. It's a better story about the witch hunt than um, the witch finders. Um, Army of Death. And... Then we've got Black and White from the Black and White TARDIS arc. I'm not going to listen to this for a while. Uh, my fr my friend also gave me this for Christmas, so yeah. And we've got We Are the Daleks. Um, it's a big jump again. Uh, this is release 201. It's really good. I do recommend this a lot, so yeah. And then for like Christmas one, one year... Uh, another one of my friends gave me You Are the Doctor and Other Stories. I believe this was like Christmas 20... Or maybe it was my birthday actually, 2016. Yeah. Because this was like one of the first big finishes I actually ever had. Like, well it was early on. Not one of the very first, but early on because I had a little darker. Thing is, I accidentally fucked up the cover of this, so I switched it with a story that I feel like did, didn't deserve a good thing as well. And you will obey me from the Two Masters trilogy. Uh, if you can see the fucked upness, it's yeah, but yeah, it's it's an all right story. Uh, probably the weakest in the Two Masters trilogy. Vampire of the Mind, just a good story on its own, to be honest. And then the two masters itself. You do need to have listened to like the other two in the trilogy to get this. Um, I I feel like, but it is a good story. Uh, John Dorney did a good job with this one. Shadow Planet and World Apart. I decided to get this from Forbidden Planet one one time. So it's it's a good like. Um, both both stories are two good two parts. So yeah. The middle. Um, <laughs> Same guy that got me, uh, you were the doctor in other stories, got me like the middle and static. Um, so yeah. Uh, again, I'll I'm probably gonna listen to like the whole monthly range in order, so this'll be a while until I get 
this. But yeah, so that's the monthly range. Uh, next up, we've got bonus releases. We've got Real Time. Uh, it's a good story. With, it's a good Cyberman story. I do recommend Real Time. It is good. Uh, Sharda. I prefer Tom Baker Sharda, but this one is a good one as well. Return of the Daleks. I've not listened to this one yet. And then we've got a single special release, The Light at the End. I do want the limited edition of this. Um, I've only got the standard edition, but you know, that's fine. So then we've got Doctor Who Unbound. I'm putting it here because I've, I've got my own system with uh, doing placing all the audios. I'm putting them in release order of, um, yeah, release order in each range, and each range in order they first started. So, and I count Doc Unbound as a Doctor Who range, so, yeah, first we've got Old Mortality, um, What If the Doctor Never Left Galfrey, it is a good listen, I do recommend it. Then we've got, moving on to the next shelf, we've got, uh, Simply for the Devil, it, it's alright, I don't think it's one of the best, um, Unbound audios, but it, David Warner's Doctor is actually really good, so I do recommend it. Four Fathom Five is possibly like one of my favorite uh, Doctor Who audios. Um, it's not like s amazing, uh, but it is honestly like really good. I do actually recommend like getting this. It's out of print now, like all of the Unbound audios, but you know it's really good. What if the Doctor believed the end? Just the ends justified the means. I didn't say for simply for the devil. It's like what if the Doctor uh, arrived on Earth uh, a bit too late, like a few decades late, so yeah. Then we've got He Just at Scars. People hate this, and I don't get why. It's, it's... It is a big fan wank, but it's by Gary Russell, what do you expect? Um, but yeah, I do feel like all the elements from Doctor Who... Actually, yeah, it was just... Real good. Um... I didn't show this in my last one, but I did actually, I did have owned Deadline for since like 2016, uh, because I decided I wanted all the Rob Sherman audios, but the thing is, this, the, the print, okay, everything's fine except the CD case itself, because for some reason they misprinted it. I was thinking of like, email being finished about it, but then they have the clearance sale, so, mm-hmm, uh, the disc hasn't been listened to, but you know, um, so I'm thinking I might just get a replacement case for it. Exile, which wasn't in the clearance sale where I got all the other Unbound stories, apart from Deadline, because I owned Deadline for a while. But Exile I just got on eBay and it... No. Just, no. It's not worth it. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it back in, actually. I'll just put it back in, but it's not worth it. I mean, for collection's sake, if, if, you're, if you're a completionist, then fair enough. But it's just not worth it. If you're not a completionist, just don't, don't bother. It's, it's a shame, because Arabella Weir actually did do a good job as the Doctor. Her Doctor would be really good if she got enough, got the right material to work with. But no, Nicholas Briggs decided to, like, blow up Sainsbury's in his script. He didn't actually decide to blow up, Nicholas Briggs is not a terrorist. Just thought I'd make that clear. Anyway, A Storm of Angels, it's a sequel to Old Mortality, and it's basically, well, the Doctor just decides, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to mess about with history. That's what happens if he didn't seal the TARDIS back, back when he was young enough to be Hartnell. <laughs> and we've got Masses of War, um, set on Scarrow, um, David Warner Doctor travels with Nicholas Courtney, uh, Brigadier. So yeah. So, the next range I have is the 8th Doctor Adventures. Um, I've got the first three series of 8 and Lucy, so I'm planning to get series 4 at some point. Um, probably when they next put it on offer. But yeah. Blood of the Daleks Part 1. And Blood of the Daleks Part 2. It's a great story, probably the best in Season 1. Horror of Glam Rock is also really good. I do recommend it. Um, it's by Paul Mars, so uh, he's a bit of a controversial Doctor Who writer. You either love his work or you hate his work, but this one's really good. It's not like his typical comedic fare, 
but it's like I, I, I just recommend this Immortal Beloved and I think this is the weakest in season one it's it's got a good premise but it's just mm, no nah. uh, I'm I like Jonathan Clements's work on Big Finish but Immortal Beloved is not what I like from him so yeah uh, Phobos, another relatively weak one. I prefer this to Immortal Beloved, but, um, to be honest, it's got a weaker premise, so, yeah. Also, it's not got the Ice Warriors in it, it's just set on M Mars' moon. So, there we go. No More Lies. I like this one. I don't love it, I just like it. Um, but it's good, it's got the Return of the Vortazors from, um, the 8th Doctor Monthly range stuff 2001, so it's good. It's it, it continuity stuff. Then we've got Human Resources Part 1 and Human Resources Part 2. Gee, I wonder who the villain is. Probably the Zarbi or something, I don't know. But it's a good story, good conclusion to the season. Um, but I feel like Season 2 is much better. Um, Dead London, it's um, for a story called Dead London, it's feels very alive as Jubekle said. It mm, it's it's interesting. Um it's it's a it's a good story. I do recommend it. But um but I feel like it is one of it's it's on the weaker end of season two, but season two is a strong season. It's probably the best season out of the eighth Doctor Adventures so far. I've not listened to season four, so please don't shoot me. Um Max Warp it's, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's Top Gear parody. Um, by the way, Top Gear was the it's still going on, but it was the show that was really good. But the problem is, all the people who were in it are terrible people. One of them got fired for it. They all left, and yeah. Just in case you don't know what Top Gear is, because it's like it's a dead show at this point. They're still making it with like Matt LeBlanc for some reason. Brave New Town, really good story. Suspenseful, even though there's like no one in it, pretty much. So, like I do recommend this one if you're gonna listen if you if you're gonna like skip most of Eighth Doctor Lucy Miller stuff, um, listen to Blood of the Daleks, um, Horror of Glamrock. Um, I guess No More Lies because it leads into Human Resources, and then you can just skip to this one if you don't if you really want to like minimize costs, which you might want to do because big finisher is expensive but you know what fair enough like but yeah brave new town i do recommend just because it's really good skull of soap just skip it it's it's nothing really happens in it it's, it's thing is i've started to realize mark platt is a bit of an overrated writer he's written some really good things like spare parts and the Silver Turk, but he's also written the Skull of Sobek and Blue Guru. So yeah, Grand Theft Cosmos. I just, I just like this one. It's just fun. I'm just, 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 just it's fun. You don't need to listen to it, but I do think it's fun. If you, you're gonna listen to, to, to be honest, like. Definitely listen to Zygon Who Fell to Earth. It's important and it's just good. It's just really good. Like this season is a strong season. I there is not a bad one in the season apart from Skull Soga. So yeah. And then we've got Sisters of the Flame. It's got Rosto, the the talking centipede. Um And then the Vengeance of Morbius. I wonder who the villain is. Uh but yeah, it'll, it's left on a cliffhanger that is resolved in Orbis. It's, it's alright, I guess. Hot House. Really good story of the crinoids. It's suspenseful, and I do think it's good. I think Season 3 is better than Season 1 overall. But when Season 1 is good, it's like the best stuff. But like, Season 3 is just average. Uh, but there is good stuff in there. Um, um, Beast of Warlock. It's, it's decent. I, I do think you should listen to it. 
We're in Dawn. Uh, it's, it's, it's good, it's good. It's possibly... Yeah, it is the best one in this season. I do recommend it, just, yeah. The scapegoat is interesting. It's... I do think it's worth a listen, unlike the Cannibalists, which is filler. Then we've got the Eight Truths and World Wide Web. An interesting, like, cult-type story, which I would love to be seen on screen. Uh, but probably not going to do anything like that, because they've just had a Spider episode. So, there we go. Right, moving on to the Eighth Doctor box sets. So, starting out with Dark Eyes, with... The Great War. Uh, Dark Eyes was my very first ever big finish, so kind of spoiled this area, season four. So yeah, um, the F fugitives, uh, Tangled Web, and X and the Daleks. Shitty title, but you know, Dark Eyes is a good set. I do recommend it. It's not as good as everyone says it is, but it's still pretty darn good. So there we go. I, yeah, because it's overrated, but it's like, same way as Spare Parts is, it's still really good. It's just not the best thing ever. So then we've got the Traitor. I mean, Dark Eyes 2 is a good set. I, I do think Dark Eyes 2, I, I feel like it doesn't do like the same thing as Dark Eyes. It literally just transforms Dark Eyes into something else. But it's still a good set on its own right. Uh, the White Room, Time's Horizon, and Eyes of the Master. I do believe, like, okay, so Dark Eyes 1 is the best set, then it's Dark Eyes 2. Dark Eyes 3 felt like an ending, even though it was rubbish. Um, well, not rubbish, it was just average, painfully average, and then Dark Eyes 4, decent set, but not as good as Dark Eyes 1 and 2. So Dark Eyes 3, it has the Master in it, but it also has Narvin from the Gallifrey series in it. So we've got the Death of Hope. Um, yeah. The Reviled. Master Plan. I used to really love this one, right? When I first heard it, I really loved it. When I, on a re-listen, it's, eh. A Life in the Day. It's, it's, actually, this one's probably the best one in Dark Eyes 4. It's really good. Monster Mont Marcher is also pretty good. Uh, Master of the Daleks is when this set starts to go downhill. It's still good, but, mm. And then Eye of Darkness is not really the finale you'd be expecting, but, mm. Anyway, then we get on to Ravenous. Or not Ravenous, Doom Coalition. So it all blends together for me, I don't know. Doom Coalition. So we start out with the 11. This is actually really good. One of the best, like, Gallifrey stories. Mainly because of the 11 himself. And we've got the Red Lady. I think the Red Lady is very good. It's a very good story written by John Dorney. The Galileo Trap, it's not as bad, I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is. It's a common theme amongst Big Finish, but like, it is in the weaker half of the set, definitely. And then the Satanic Mill, no, no, just die. Um, and we've got Doom Coalition 2, starting out with Beachhead. Um, it's alright, reward story. Alright. Scenes from our life. Uh, the gift. Possibly the best one in this set. But again, it's. Doom Collection 2 is not the best set in the world. Then we've got the Sonomancer. Just. It's not that great. But River Song is probably the best thing in it. Which you wouldn't expect. You know, I'm not really a fan of River Song. But. I do feel like on Big Finish she is better, definitely. Which is why I'm sort of interested in her series. Um, so then, Doom Coalition 3, Absent Friends. Best story in the entirety of Doom Coalition. 
the eighth piece and the doomsday chronometer this was them experimenting with like a two-part story within the box within box sets uh, because those two stories just link in with each other um, and yeah it's great doom collision 3 is probably the best box set since dark eyes 1 um, I, I won't deny that because doom collision 3 is a solid box set I need to I'm gonna probably marathon doom collision at some point because I did that with dark eyes so we've got the Crucible of Souls. It's just, this finale has one of my favourite cliffhangers to any 8th Doctor series. Uh, next to Vengeance of Morbius, this one has a really good cliffhanger. So then we've got uh, Ship in a Bottle. So it's it's a brilliant, like, 300... This is like the shirt zo of the modern 8th uh, Doctor one, because it's literally just the main cast. Uh, but it is good. Not as good as Absent Friends, but definitely good. It, Although I feel like an hour it makes it feel a bit dragged out. Ow! Do oh, my... Ah, my, uh... My remote control of my, of my TV just fell on my foot. <laughs> so then, you've got Songs of Love, which is a Dr. Light story. Oh, nearly fell out. It's... It's interesting, it's... It's the last one River Song's in, in the entirety of Doom Coalition. I feel like River Song wasn't needed. In Doom Coalition 3, she was at her best because she actually... It, she felt like a major character and actually did stuff. Uh, the Side of the Angels is possibly my favourite Doom Coalition 4 story because... Um, I, I mean, it has the Monk and the Weeping Angels in it. And it's, it's actually really good. I think... Yeah, I, w I would say Doom Coalition is worth it on the whole, it's just not the best thing ever. I would say it's mm, more worth it as a whole than Dark Eyes, even though I feel like Dark Eyes isn't as good. Oh no, it is better, it is better. So, yeah, stop the clock, it's, it's a finale, alright. <laughs> Then we move on to Ravenous. Uh, to be honest, Ravenous 1 was a disappointing set, and I didn't get Ravenous 2 when it initially came out, so if I can find it for a good price. Because everyone's saying Ravenous 2 is amazing! And the thing is, Ravenous 1 disappointed me so much, I didn't bother getting Ravenous 2. So, yeah, so, their finest hour, 8th option, meets Winston Churchill. I do feel like the chemistry between Paul McGann and Ian McNeese is good. How to make a killing in time? I don't. Mm, it's no, I don't. I just don't feel it. World of Damnation, Return of the Candyman. The Candyman's like the best thing in this. Also, uh, Mark Bonar as Lee Eleven and Hassan Morahan as uh, Helen. They both have good chemistry. Then we've got Sweet Salvation, which is the second half of this story. So then we've got the Companion Chronicles, much better range than Ravenous so far, from what I've listened to, but anyway. So the Companion Chronicles, um, I've not got many, but I do want to get more. Um, we've got the Mahogany Murderers, uh, the pilot for Jago and Lightfoot. Uh, we'll see Jago and Lightfoot later. It's a good story, I do recommend it. Uh, you, especially if you're planning to start Jago and Lightfoot. The Suffering, a four-part story as opposed to the usual two parts. It's about the suffragettes, and yeah, it's good. I do recommend this one. Solitaire is a bit different because it's actually properly full cast. Um, because it's only two characters. It's not like a narrated story like the others. Uh, but yeah, it's got the Celestial Toy Maker in it. Then we've got Parry and the Piscon Paradox, which tries to explain um, what happened with Parry in Trial of the Time Lord. Um, but it's it's good. Uh, first half's a bit meh, but the second half is really good. Then we've got the Oliver Harper trilogy with um, the Perpetual Bond, Cold Equations, and the First Wave. Get these if you want to get into the Companion Chronicles, please. They are really good, and I feel like they sum up the Companion Chronicles perfectly. So then we've got the Scorchies. Uh, I got this in a third Doctor sale back when series ten, series eleven, sorry, was airing. And, um, yeah. I sort of needed this after Rosa, because <laughs> this is such a fun story. 
um, even though the Scorchies have a pretty dark backstory. Right, so, we've then got the Companion Chronicles First Doctor Volume 2. Uh, I do actually recommend this box set. It is a, it's got something for everyone who likes First Doctor. However, I can't say the same thing about the Second Doctor Volume 2, because it looks pretty. But the only reason you would want to get this is, like, two fight scenes with Leela and Jamie. Two scenes! Not not an entire story, just two scenes. And I don't think it's worth getting the whole set for, so there we go. So then we've got the stage plays. We've got, um, well, I got these in a clearance sale. We've got Doctor and the Seven Keys to Doomsday, and then The Curse of the Daleks. Not listening to Curse of the Daleks, but Seven Keys to Doomsday is really good. Ooh, I, I didn't say which stories were in First Doctor. Fields of Terror, Good Sequels, Reign of Terror, Across the Darkened City, it's a good Dalek story, a good double handle of Steven. Bonfires of the Vanities, eh. And then The Plague of Dreams is a good way to explain how we're getting more First Doctor Ben and Polly stories. And then Second Doctor, uh, The Curator's Egg, basically just Doctor Who does Jurassic Park. Dumb waiter is Leela and Jamie have a fight. Um, well, that's the only important bit. But the Iron Maid. Uh, to be honest, I've forgotten all about that one. It was not memorable. The Tactics of Defeat was just a um, story with um, Daphne Ashbrook's unit character. I think. Yeah, her name's Ruth Matheson. So yeah, then we've got only one lost story. Oh, I've got only one lost story, and that is the Elite. If if we're not counting Jubilee for some reason, this would be my favorite Big Finish Dalek story. Spoiler alert: that the Daleks are in it. Well, a Dalek is in it, but it's just really good. Just get it. I don't care. Just get it. So then we've got short trips. Um, I've listened to all of Volume One, but uh, I I mean I'm. Probably gonna listen to volume two, volume three, and volume four at some point. But um I just mm, yeah. Uh I've also got the toy, which I got on eBay, but uh it's uh complete his subscribers of the complete history got list, but I don't think you can get it anymore. So uh yeah, I've got that. So now onto the novel adaptations with Love and War. Brilliant story. Uh, introduces Bernie Summerfield, who is a great companion. Now we've got The Well Mannered War. It's a just brilliant story. Um, apparently, it's a really good adaptation of the original novel as well. Then Damaged Goods, one of the best Seventh Doctor stories of all time. Theatre of War, worth a listen, I would say. It's not the best thing ever. All Consuming Fire is probably my least favourite one. I don't know why, I just didn't feel for that one. Nightshade is possibly my favourite Seventh Doctor story, by the way. Yeah, like, Virgin New Adventures actually had really good stories, and Nightshade uh, is a reasonably good adaptation, apparently. Well, I've not read Nightshade, but it does have a few changes. But, yeah. Original Sin introduces Chris and Roz, who appeared in Damaged Goods. And then we've got Cold Fusion. Um... It's a good uh, six-part uh, adventure. Uh, it's not the best ever, but I do recommend it. So now we've got the early adventures. I've only got series two, so we've got the Yes Men. It's a, it's, it's a good story. I would I would say it is worth a listen, but I wouldn't be like saying, "Oh, you have to get this one." But the Forsaken, I would say, is a good like story, but they don't really do anything with the fact that Ben meets his father. The Black Hole is my favourite one out of these. It's just... It's just, uh, it's just fun. But it does try to decanonize Season 6B. And we've got the Isos Network. I don't see how you can make a Cyberman story boring. Uh, even, even a Cyberman story where Dr. Jamie and Zoe ride on giant slugs. So now we've got Philip Hinchcliffe Presents. Uh, Ghost of Grailstead, Disc 1, Disc 2, and Disc 3. It's a good story. I, just, I do recommend Philip Hinchcliffe Presents. It's, it is a good box set, but it is expensive, so yeah. And then we've got The Devil's Armada Disc 1 and Disc 2. Again, The Devil's Armada is a good version of The Witch Find. 
I don't know, the Witch Finders was good, but it's just like those big finished stories that are better. Uh, especially Witch from the Well. So now we've got the third Doctor Adventures. Uh, I've only got Volume 4. It's good, it's got a good Cyberman story but it, uh, in the second half, but the first half is a good Monk story, so... Yeah, but the Monk just feels like... Well, feels like the Master should have been there in all honesty, but the Monk is still a good supplement, I would say. But yeah, it should have had the Master in it. Um, I mean, I don't mind the Monk being with the Third Doctor, but I do mind it when it just feels like it should be the Master. So now we've got Eighth Doctor Time War. Um, I, all I'm going to say is I'm putting this here, like, I'm putting this here, and, um, well, I would put Time, uh, War Doctor before this, uh, because I'm, pu I put these in, like, release order, I guess? Because I would, I considered these, like, two sub-ranges within the same range, uh, War Doctor and Eighth Doctor, the Time War. But anyway, we've got, uh, Starship of Theseus, I do like this cover, I do like the covers for most of them. But I don't like the slipcover at all. So we've got Echoes of Grey. It's also a good cover. I mean, I reviewed this box set for the Hooniversals, so I, I'm not really going to say many much opinions here. Um, the Conscript. Yeah, it was good. One Life. This cover is hideous. It's like, it's got the same image of the Eighth Doctor. Just, why? What? Why? <sighs> so then we have... Uh, Seventh Doctor, The New Adventures, uh, box set with Chris and Rolls. So, um, we've got Trial of the Time Machine. It, it's a good start for the set. I honestly feel like, uh, Sylvester McCoy puts his best points in that. Vanguard is alright. Uh, it's not really... Eh. I mean, teenagers fighting a battle against each other. Or well, teenagers who survived this, like, war that wiped out the entire planet and now... The robots are still fighting. I don't know. The ja the Jabari countdown. Um, good story. Uh, probably my favorite in this set. Uh, and also, um, I don't want to spoil it, but there. It's progressive. I'm just gonna say that it's progressive. It's a progressive story. So people saying Big Finish is um, not being progressive due to a certain recent uh, piece of news about one of the recent releases. Yeah, no, they are progressive. Then the Dread of Night is also really good. It's basically like... Every so often we get a ghost light -esque story with the Seventh Doctor. Uh, like, we've got Night Thoughts, and now we've got um, this. So, there. Now time for spin-offs. Uh, for my birthday, I decided I wanted the first series of Bernie Summerfield. So we've got Oh No It Isn't, Beyond the Sun, Walking to Babylon, Birthright, which uh, is uh, an adaptation of a Virgin New Adventure, so yeah. They're all adaptations of Virgin books, but Birthright and Just War uh, are adaptations of the Doctor Who New Adventures. And then we've got Dragon's Wrath. I I think this is an original story, but I don't know. But uh, Oh No It Isn't and Beyond the Sun and Walking to Babylon, they're all adaptations of Bernie Summerfield books, um, but Birthright and Just War are uh, Doctor Who new adventures. So now we've got Dalek Empire, uh, Series 1, Episode 1, Invasion of the Daleks, Episode 2, The Human Factor, oh, I need to, yeah. Episode 3, Death of the Daleks, I need Episode 4 and then I'll listen to it. So, Series 2 uh, is all Dalek War and I've only got part four. Um, I was thinking, do you know what, I'll start collecting the out-of-print Dalek Empire ones, but to be honest, I might as well just get the whole, like, set of Series 2 and Series 3 if I ever find it on eBay and I feel like getting it. So yeah, speaking of Series 3, I've got Episode 2, The Healers. And then I've got Dalek Empire 4. Um... Dark Empire 4, The Fearless, uh, oh, Part 1, Fearless Part 2, The Fearless Part 3, and The Fearless Part 4. Do I have it in the right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'll listen to this after I've listened to the first three series. Uh, another series I'm wanting to listen to soon is Sarah Jane Smith, so I've got 
comeback, which is very rare. I got this for tw like 20 quid, and it was sealed as well, but this is the only way I can listen to it on CD. <sighs> then we've got the towel connection. Uh, test of Nerve. And Ghost Town. Uh, I don't have Mirror Signal Maneuver, but I have Buried Secrets. Um, I I do intend on completing the Sarah Jane Smith range and listening to it. So yeah, now we've got Gallifrey. Uh, it's this this is a series that I do like and want to pursue, although series three disappointed me. But anyway, I do recommend series one and series two. So we've got Weapon of Choice. Well, chapter one reference. Uh, weapon of choice. Uh, chapter two, uh, square one. Chapter three, Inquisition, or the Inquiry. Sorry. Uh, chapter four, which is the finale of series one, A Blind Eye, which features Charlie Pollard's sister, who is a sort of fascist. Uh, then we've got uh, series two, Galfrey chapter five, Lies. Galfrey chapter six. Uh, Spirit. Gallifrey Chapter 7, Pandora. Gallifrey Chapter 8, in Insurgency. And Gallifrey Chapter 9, Imperiatrix. Oh, this one made me so excited for Series 3. But anyway, uh, this one has two discs. Um, yeah, it's actually like more of a 90 minute long type deal. Uh, so the second half of the second disc is a behind the scenes bonus thing because the story was so long and they're like, we might as well include something else on the second disc. So yeah. So then we've got series three, uh, chapter 10, Fractures. I just, I just can't read to be honest. Uh, chapter, tw chapter 11, Warfare. Chapter 12, Appropriation. Chapter 13, Mind Bomb. And Chapter 14, Panacea. I don't know why it's called Panacea, but oh well. Uh, and it, it ends on a cliffhanger, and guess when they resolved it? Like, five years later. So, yeah, I... I but I do want to listen to Gallifrey 4, Gallifrey 5, Gallifrey 6, and then the single releases. And then we've got Gallifrey Time War... Uh, I'm thinking of picking up Time War 2, I'm thinking of pre-ordering it. Um, I'll probably do it with my birthday money, but I also want to save up and like get a subscription to like monthly range starting from like Iron Bright because I don't want everything to go out of print. So there we go. Uh, so yeah, then we've got Classic Unit. I have heard the coup. Uh, I think it's I think it's the word coup and not coop. But anyway. Um, so then we've got Time Heals, Snakehead, Longest Night. I'll listen to these once I get, like, the final one, uh, which is kind of hard to get because I can't find it on eBay. But anyway, there was a Doctor Who sort of box set, Guild Unit Dominion, and I've got it here because it, it follows sort of a production code type thing, like, oh, this is the second series of Unit and plus... You like the production code is like unit five, whilst well, so this is one, two, three, and then four. So anyway, so we've got unit dominion part one, unit dominion part two, unit dominion part three, and unit dominion part four. I do recommend it. It is a good box set, but um, get it when it's in a sale. It's like because I wouldn't spend too much money on it. With Philip Hinchcliffe presents, I do feel like it is worth the money. But it's just a lot of money, so that's why, that's why I recommend buying it in the sale. But this time, it's just like, it's not worth 40 quid. Anyway, so then there's Iris Wild Time, a series I do want to pursue on. But like, it's, you know, um, I've got other things on my mind with it. So we've got uh, ooh, Wild Time at Large. And The Claws of Santa. Uh, I have listened to the two irises from series two. I do want like uh, the devil in this wild time, and then series two, series three, series four, series five. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, then I Davros, possibly one of the best things Big Finish has ever done. 
Uh, I've I finally got all of them. Gosh, purity was a pain to get. So first we've got innocence when Davros was a child. Purity when Davros was a young man. Yeah, it's got scratches on it, but this it's it's not too bad condition. But it's this was a pain. To, this was like the only time I found purity. Uh, I got it for like seventeen quid. Well, sixteen quid plus a postage and packaging. Uh, corruption. Um, which was just before Davros got scarred, uh, while he was being a scientist. And then guilt, which is set before Genesis of the Daleks. It's getting a bit hard to position myself, because I've got, like, a, a wardrobe right next to my shelf. So, um, this is probably going to be annoying. It's, an it's annoying for me. So, I've got Jago and Lightfoot now. Uh, my favourite Big Finish spin-off, as of yet. So, first we've got... Uh, Jago and Lightfoot, the Blood, the, the Soldier. From series one. Uh, which is, it is good. And Jago and Lightfoot, the Below the Devil. Can't remember much about that one. Spirit Trap. I, re I need to re-listen to series one. And then the Similarity Engine. I remember liking series one a lot. I need to re-listen to it though. So then we've got series two, Lightfoot and Sanders. This is a good story. Uh, Gabriel Sanders is one of my favorite villains. Uh, he's, he's he's so great. Uh, I think there's something about David Collings that I like because he's like my second favorite Unbound Doctor from uh, Full Fathom Five. So yeah. Then we've got the Necropolis Express. It's a, it, it's really just like. It's like, Jago and Lightfoot Series 1 and 2 feels more like paranormal stuff as opposed to sci-fi stuff, and that's really cool. Um, Jago and Lightfoot, The Theatre of Dreams. Oh, that's, this one's good. It, series 2, I just recommend Series 1 and 2. Like, the rest of them, just... 3 and, f three and 4, I feel like, are still important, but um, Series 1 and 2, just, if, just get those two, and if you're hooked, then continue. Uh, then we've got the uh, yeah the Ruthen inheritance. It's a bit weird. it's like Gabriel Sanders. He like actually reminds me a lot of like the Pandora arc in Gallifrey. Come to think of it, um, like because Sanders engineered like Ruthven's uh, bloodline, I guess. So, yeah. So then we've got series three. Uh, Dead Men's Tales, it's it's pretty good. I like series three, but I feel like series four is better. Um Man at the End of the Garden. Uh yeah, it's good. It, it features one of the girls from the uh the eleventh hour, so yeah. Swan Song. It's weird, like I remember like the series as a whole, but I can't remember like individual episodes. And Chronoclasm. By the way, Leela is in series 3 and 4, so that's a good thing. So now series 4. Got Jago and Love. I, series 4 is the one that I remember the best, because it's the one I've listened to the most recently. And Jago and Love is really good. Uh, Jago falls in love when he's in, like, Blackpool? So yeah. Uh, Beautiful Things features Oscar Wilde. And, um... It, it, it sort of, I guess it sort of makes, I, because Oscar Wilde, yeah, he's gay, so it, I guess, like, I started to have fears when I was like, oh no, are they gonna make Jacob and Lightfoot homophobic, because, like, it's set in the 19th century and being gay was illegal, so, yeah, uh, but, no, uh, Jago just doesn't like Oscar Wilde because he thinks he's a pretentious, like, idiot, so... Not not because of sexuality. He just... He, he's, he actually thinks that it's kind of sad that men can't love men. I mean, he's not he's not gay himself, but, like, he feels like in a better time it would happen. Then there's The Lonely Clock. I vaguely remember that one. So let's move on to the finale of Series 4. The Hourglass Killers. This is the reveal that Claudius Dark is... Well, it, it just reveals who Claudius Dark truly is. But then again... Uh, 
Might as well spoil it, seeing as how uh, the next one, Voyage to Venus, which is a special release. Yeah, yeah, Claudia Stark was the sixth Doctor. Uh, this one's a good one. I do recommend Voyage to Venus. Voyage to the New World isn't as good, but I do still recommend it. The two Voyage stories are great, but I feel like... Uh, yeah, they just feel like extensions of Series 4, so that's why I changed the spines and changed the cover. So yeah. The next spin-off I have is Tortured. I only have two audios on CD. I've got um, The Conspiracy. I also have um, Ghost Mission, uh, but on download when it was on offer. And it was really good. I, I, I do want it physically, but I only have two physically. That being The Conspiracy and Broken. I, I mean, I just got Broken because the cover looked cute. <laughs> But, um, no, this is actually a really good story. It basically, it's Yanto's character development in Series 1, which was all off screen. So, yeah. So, now it's the Diary of River Song. Uh, I cracked and got the fifth box set. I, wa I wanted it for my birthday. Uh, it's because it has all the masters in it. Well, not all of the masters, but each episode has a master in it. So, we've got uh, the Bechdel Test, uh, which has Missy in it. Uh, Animal Instinct, which has the Jack the Beavers master in it. Uh, the Lifeboat and the Deathboat, which has the Eric Roberts master in it. I, I can't wait to get to this one. And then we've got Concealed Weapon with the War Master in it, Derek Jackby. He's my favourite master, mainly because of the stuff he did in Big Finish. I, I came to that conclusion after listening to Gallifrey Time War, but... The War Master, only the good, um, with... Um, it's uh, Beneath the Viscoid. Yeah, yeah, he was just really good in this, and I feel like the set, it's good set, worth making a full series out of. But yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's the best set ever, but it, it, it does deserve, like, praise and to be its own series, mainly because of Jack Jackby. And there's the Good Master. Where he picks up Cole, the Skyman, uh, which is basically Cole centric, um, and it's like, yeah, but it's like all part of the Master's plan. Uh, which Jack Jacoby, you feel like he's the protagonist, but he's really not. He's it, he, he's like the Seventh Doctor if he was the Master. Yeah, that's 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 how I would say. And then we've got. Um, the Heavenly Paradigm, uh, which is a really good conclusion to the set. I've also got Master of Callus. Um, I do, I do want to listen to that. I'm probably going to listen to it soon because I really, really wanted to listen to it, but um, not. I, I have not listened to it yet, but I will. So that's all the audio dramas from Big Finish, but I've got more stuff. Um, so I've got soundtracks from Big Finish. I got them in a clearance sale, because why not? Uh, I've got Fifth Doctor one, signed, limited edition, signed by Peter Davidson. I've got the Sixth Doctor one, uh, same thing, but with Colin Baker. And then the music from the Axelus Saga. I don't even have the Axelus Saga yet. Uh, I probably, like, by the time I do another collection update, I'll probably have it, because I do want to see what it's all about. So yeah, then we've got Big Finish interview stuff, uh, so like Big Finish talks back. We've got the Audio Companions, which was the first one, with uh, Maggie Stables, India Fisher, and uh, Lisa Bauman. As like all were like the first like uh, companions that weren't from on screen. So yeah, then we've got the Eighth Doctor writers. This is a good like interview because it like explains the process of how they wrote the 2002 releases. Mainly, like, the main stuff that interested me was the stuff about Chimes of Midnight and Seasons of Fear. <laughs> but they were, I mean... It's because, I mean, they are my favourite ones, so yeah. Then we've got the Benjamin and Baxter interview. Uh, I do want to listen to this, but I'll probably only listen to it, like, after Jago and Lightfoot Series 5. So yeah, now we've got the BBC audiobooks. Um, these are original 
audiobooks written to be as audiobooks uh, as opposed to just books read out by someone um, which I do want to get those I do want to get the BBC audiobook because reading sucks but anyway uh, so first there's pest control um, uh, Tenth Doctor and Donna's story apparently this is really good Dead Air is also like people say this is like the best one so I'll check it out as well uh, that's the only Tenth Doctor ones I have then um, the Ring of Steel the Runaway Train the Jade Pyramid the Hounds of Artemis and Blackout uh, all the 11th Doctor ones, and I think Dead Air as well, I got off the same guy as come back, and it all just came in one big thing. So yeah, then we've got uh, Hornet's Nest, um, which are audio dramas starring Tom Baker before he did his own like 4th Doctor Adventures range on Big Finish. Uh, so we've got Stuff of Nightmares, um, wait, the Dead Shoes... Uh, Circus of Doom. Uh, a Sting in the Tail. And Hive of Horror. I do want to listen to these at some point soon as I'm planning on doing a Hooniversals review on it. Because it's interesting and I've just thought, do you know what, I, I do want these at some point and I got them for like, really cheap. Uh, so yeah. Then we've got the Torchwood audiobooks. We've got Hidden uh, by Stephen Saville. And then Everyone Says Hello by Dan Abnett. Um, so, yeah, and then we've got Doc 2 A Legend Reborn. Well, Doc 2 at the BBC A Legend Reborn. Uh, don't know what that is. I think it's just a documentary type thing. And then we've got non-BBC releases, uh, Sherlock Holmes meets Doctor Who, uh, music for brass and saxophone by Carrie Blyton. My mum just decided to get me that for Christmas one time. It's, no, I don't... Carrie Blyton's like the worst Doctor Who composer ever. So then, Troc On, I got this in a bundle where I got like a bunch of 8th Doctor stuff. So that's how I got like Neverland and Zagreus and that. And then to finish off um, this section, because I've got limited edition stuff, I've got the Love Songs for the Shine Cynical audiobook. Uh, only six stories are in order. Basically, I thought I might as well get this because I'm a fan of Robert Sherman and I've got the books that were released by Big Finish. And I, I, read, um, I read Tiny Death and it's a good anthology so I'll, once I get around to reading Love Songs for the Shine Cynical I'll give this a listen so yeah so um, here is all of the box sets uh, that uh, yeah this is a good position this is a good angle uh, these are all the box sets that some of the CDs came in so as you can see there's Dark Eyes, Dim Collection, Avenus, Philip Pinchcliffe Presents now I'll do a different thing. So yeah, these are all the box sets. We've got Dark Eyes, Dark Eyes 2, Dark Eyes 3, uh, Dark Eyes 4, Doom Collection 1, Doom Collection 2, Doom Collection 3, Doom Collection 4, then Ravenous 1, Philip Hinchcliffe Presents, 8th Doctor Time War 1, 7th Doctor New Adventures, that's just a slipcase, same thing with Galfrey Time War, Unit Dominion, Jago and Lightfoot Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, Series 4, and we've got Diary of the Song Series 5, uh, The War Master Only the Good, and the slipcase for Master of Callus. And then we've got the limited edition thing, so Worlds of Doctor Who with the Stories Mind games. 
uh, which is the Jago and Lightfoot one, which is the best one. The Resinger process, countermeasures, meh. Screaming Skull was alright, and then Second Sight, Gallifrey, yum. Uh, then we've got the Sixth Doctor, The Last Adventure, uh, which has End of the Line, which is an experimental story. It's good, yeah. Then there's uh, The Red House, Werewolves, and Charlie and stuff. Hmm. Uh, Stage Fright, the best one. Flip is great and uh, has Jago and Lightfoot in it, and it's got a really good plot as well of the Valiard recreating all the Doctor's three generations. And then we've got The Brink of Death, which uh, is the Sixth Doctor's regeneration story, and it's underwhelming, I guess. So then we've got The Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 1, got this on eBay for like 20 quid. Uh, Technophobia's a really good story. I really love Time Reaven. Death and the Queen is not like the best thing ever, but it's like still really funny. It gets um, Doctor and Donna to a T. And then we've got Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 2. Um, Infamy of the Zaros is the best in this set, and I really wanted to love the Sword of the Chevalier. It's still really good. I would give it a 7 out of 10. And then Cold Vengeance, Ice Warrior Story, blah. I'm not a fan. But yeah, there we have it. Uh, my big finished collection. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I guess I'll see you whenever I see you, I guess. Goodbye.